everybody and welcome you to another amazing edition of Mean Green Game Day. I'm Shaji Adam and with me today, Connor Hibbett, Jack Buckmar, and Sarah Baskins. And we got some two new fresh, uh, two new fresh faces here, excuse me. How's everybody doing? I'm doing, doing great. great today. Excited to be doing here. Good? All right, let's see if you can keep up with the veterans here. Okay, we'll try. We're going to do our best. Season Yeah, we'll try. Yeah, we'll try. We're not that old, but we all on here, we feel really similar. Like a year you're a senior in terms of the desk. In terms of the desk, okay. Yeah. Well, let's get started here. Let's kind of recap last week's game against UTSA. Mean Green, they just kind of kind of just put their hands aside and just said, hey, let's just get this done. And they absolutely did, winning 45 to three, the least amount of points allowed in the Seth Luttrell era. Finally winning back-to-back -back games and they remain undefeated at home. Overall, a very good win. But Connor, I'm gonna start with you. Has this game, winning 45-3, to did this bring UNT's confidence back? Most well, certainly. Uh, you look at their season so far, their offense has obviously been clicking with Mason Fine and, and all their veterans, but their defense has been very questionable thus far. But that was a great game in terms of boosting your confidence right before a big non-conference matchup with your in-state rival in Houston. So I think holding them to three points, like you said, the least amount of points allowed in the South Central era, I think that's huge, playing back-to-back -back home games. And you got a Houston team that's a little bit on the downtrend. I think the confidence is sky high right now for the Mean Green. Yeah, first off, just like to start off, I'm wearing green this week. Went black last week. Good choice, good choice. Swimming in sweat last week. Decided to go green this week. But of course, we did. It was 45 to 3. The confidence is high. The atmosphere here is still high. We got Prince playing behind us. It's all great. Yeah. The confidence is definitely at an all time high. But, you know, is the confidence back? Of course it is. You know, there was questions coming out of the first three games. What's wrong with the offense? Did Graham Harrell really have that much control? Is Mason Fine all right? And then you go out and you drop 45 points against the CUSA rival. It, it, the confidence is back. The defense was starting to show that they are a capable unit. Now they allow three points for the least amount ever in Seth Luttrell's era. So it's definitely a confidence booster. The offense is back. The defense is back. It's good to be here. I completely agree. And I also, I got to say, I watched the show last week, and I heard what you said about the black shirt, so I all, as well went green today. I don't I, know what Connor did. I don't, know, I don't know what Connor uh, thought, you, but you, you know what, I'm feeling what he's doing. You know what, I was, I, was trying to make sure, oh yeah, I was trying to make sure that for the people who felt blue, that I was going to support them, but there's no need to feel blue. UNT is going to get a win today. Right. Listen, I'm feeling what you're, I'm, I'm, loving, I'm loving what you're putting out, but I definitely agree that it was a confidence booster for this team. Listen, holding any team to three points, doesn't matter what team it is, and in, in college play, three points is, is not a lot of points, and our, our defense really went there, especially after that loss to, loss to Cal that was so close. You know, the key to that game against Cal that made it that close was really the turnovers. And that offense really punched up those holes, like plugged up those holes in that last game. 45 total, 45 points, touchdowns in every single quarter. It was just a great game, and I think it's huge for our confidence moving forward. And looking at, and looking at the Cal loss for UNT, a lot of people are going to be like, eh, it's a group of five versus a power five. But what most people don't realize is that we were down early in that game. That takes a lot of courage to be able to keep fighting, especially on the road, against an experienced Cal team led by their head coach, Justin Wilcox. Um, but UNT kept fighting, and I love that. Yes, you lost, but just to keep fighting in that game was huge. And I think their confidence, again, is sky high right now. Yeah, and kind of staying with UNT's role right now, uh, Trey Sigurds. I mean, I feel like we say his name every single week now as he, he does well deserve it. 14 carries, 143 yards, two touchdowns, 10 yards per carry. Him and DeAndre Torrey. DeAndre Torrey, one of the fastest running backs I've ever seen. They're just a great one-two punch. Teams just have no answer for them so far. They're making Mason Fine's life a whole lot easier right now, especially in his last season. Now, Jack, we've seen Jeffrey Wilson play, how great he was. Now he's on the 49ers. Do you think Trey Sigurds has been that replacement? Do you think UNT's found that new star? Good, good reference to Jeff Wilson. He's been in the NFL. He's been going off in the NFL. He's good for him. Good, good for him. him. But definitely going back to Trey Siggers, you know, we've always really had kind of that running back tandem ever since Jeff Wilson left. Last year you had Lauren Easley and DeAndre Torrey. And now this year you have Trey Siggers and DeAndre Torrey with, with um, what's his name, taking, he's taking more of the Nick Smith role, you know, that we thought he would. But now you have Trey Siggers is going out there. He's dropping 10, 10 yards per carry, 7.9 per carry per in the year. It's great. It, it's weird knowing that North Texas actually has a number one back now. We, we really haven't had that since Jeff Wilson left. So it's obvious, it's really good to know that you have that one-two punch now behind Mason. Not only is he so productive, like you guys said, 10 yards a carry, he really does open up that passing game for Mason Fine. We all know what a prolific passer Mason Fine is, but he struggled early in this year because he was getting a lot of pressure, as he should. He deserves a lot of pressure. 
But with with Trey Siggers, I think moving forward, they're going to opponents are going to be loading up the box. That's going to open up the passing game huge for Mason Fine. So I think you can't underestimate how important that is. And what a better time to have a breakout player after you lose your supposedly team leader with Rico Bussey Jr. at the receiver position. Now you have this new guy that breaks out, and you still have that guy that Mason Fine can kind of count on to take the pressure off his own shoulders. But you know, you mentioned he's averaging 7.9 yards per carry. He's five yards away from eclipsing 400 total yards on the ground. That we're not even in October yet. He's he has more total yards on the ground than Zach Moss, Jalen Hurts, some pretty big names in there, as well as DeAndre Swift for Georgia. So I mean, he's 16th in the country in total yards. I mean, this is just a perfect time to kind of almost counter the great passing attack we have with the great running attack. This is going to become a prolific offense as the season goes along. And UNT has been playing great, 45 to three. We remain undefeated at home, but I need, I, unfortunately, I have to bring it back to earth. We've seen way too many times that they've been inconsistent this entire season. I mean, the first game they scored 51, then 27, then 17, now 45. It just seems that the defense and the offense haven't really found their identity yet. Now, Sarah, can they? Can, do you think for the rest of the season they can stay consistent? I really hope so. I think that this. I think if we can win tonight, back-to-back -to -back home wins says a lot. Um, we have not been able to win on the road. And that's what really scares me. And like Connor was saying earlier, the efficiency of this team has been a little bit suspect. And so I think if we can get these back-to-back -back road wins, that's really where we need to start. We need to focus on today, get this win today, and just continue to roll well as we continue in conference play. And the efficiency starts with protecting Mason Fine. And on the road, particularly against the better teams, they've struggled to protect him. But I think against Houston today, who has a quite frankly poor defense, I think they'll be able to protect him a little bit better. But I think just standing, being efficient, which has been a struggle for them this year, 55th in the country, second in Conference USA. But if they can improve upon that, that will help them stay consistent as the season goes along. And it's just been a fantastic year for them. And Jack, do you think overall that they'll be able to keep this thing going? I mean, we, we all hope so. We all really do hope it happens. We hope nobody gets hit with the injury bug. Let's hope everyone stays healthy. But you really got to look, as, as my man right here said, we really need the O-line to stay positive. We need it. We need this zero sacks allowed last week. We need that to continue over. We need the defense to keep allowing three yard, or three points per game. We need the offense. We need the cohesion to keep going. We really need those, those first three couple games we really had passive play calling. It might have been getting used to the new system, the new offensive coordinator coming in. Maybe it was all three, him, Seth Luttrell, Mason Fine gelling. But hopefully now, especially dropping 45 points against Conference USA rival, hopefully that cohesion is there and hopefully it keeps going throughout the season. And just real quick, uh, what do you think is really, Connor, I'm going to start with you. What do you think is really stopping this team from being, you know, making their way to the top to Conference USA Championship? I think controlling their emotions is by far the most important. And you look at the injuries this year we've seen in college football, Rico Bussey included in that, uh, there's definitely been some big names to go out this year. But I think controlling their emotions. So if they were to win this game, it's getting back on track after the bye week and playing and playing, again, like I mentioned earlier, the consistency is going to be very important. But controlling their emotions, facing adversity is the most important thing. I agree. Yeah, facing adversity, that's a, that's a great point there. Uh, definitely with the expectations, we have to definitely tame the expectations. You know, his Seth Luttrell's first year, we make a bowl game. Second year, we make a bowl game. Then last year, people are thinking we're going to go undefeated. So definitely making sure that those expectations, six for Heisman's over now. Now definitely just getting back to what we do best, winning football games. And continue to improve it. Continuing to improve in the passing game, you know, we did lose Rico Bussey Jr. for this year, but I think Mason Fine is really gaining confidence in his young, young wide receivers. You know, we got Jair Shorter coming out and catching touchdown passes. He did have a drop against Cal, but I think he's going to be a prolific part of our offense moving forward. Yeah, I agree with all of you, and also very inconsistent in terms of penalties. I see no discipline in this UNT team. Yes, they won 45-3, to but see, they still have more penalties than UTSA. You can't have that, especially in a blowout win. That's when you're not even trying and you're still getting penalties. So that's Showing not really good on and off the Exactly, field. exactly. And I'm just bouncing off that, but hopefully they can maybe keep that consistency here today as they want to try and get back on the road and remain undefeated at home. But coming up, there are a lot of winners and a lot of losers last week. And coming up, we're going to decide who is on top and who needs work. How many did you have? 
I should be fine. You should be. Sir, go and step out of the vehicle for me. Yes, sir. See ya, buddy. Today, Sean's got a hearing. We'll see how it goes. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Everything starts out small. The things that hurt us, they all start from somewhere. The words we say, the things we do, they can grow into something else. What was small and innocent can become big and sometimes scary. All it takes is one comment, one picture, one video for something to catch fire. But a big problem doesn't need a big response. Not at first. Even if we don't know what to say, the eye emoji can be that first step we take. Let's all pledge to take that first small step together and change the world in a big way. I'm a witness, and so are you. Well, four weeks are officially in the books and we're here in week five. And like I said, it's only been four weeks. It's just been action packed. So much has happened. And Connor, I'm gonna start with you again. Who do you think overall going into this fifth week is the biggest winner? I think it's gotta be the Auburn Tigers. Starting a true freshman at quarterback. And I understand that Bo Nix, the true freshman quarterback, has not looked great by any means. His stats are not off the charts by, by any means. But the one time they had, he had to come back and bring his team down, was 21-6 midway through the third quarter against Oregon and he got the job done and this I want to talk about their defense their defense is incredible now statistically they may not be the best team in the country like Wisconsin is right now but they are still by far I think the most talented team overall they can fly around they can really pressure the quarterback they've already had two huge wins away from home and they still have a chance to get road wins at Florida at LSU home and then home games with Georgia and Alabama this team can still make a lot of statements this year this is a team that I would really watch out for as the season progresses. It's a great pick. Auburn, definitely good. Definitely one of the better of the top tier teams. I went kind of, you know, tier down. I went more local. SMU, they come in, or as I like to say, transfer you. <laughs> Shane Bouchelle came in after being proclaimed the savior of Texas. He loses his job to Sam Ellinger. He transfers to SMU. Nobody really had SMU on any sort of radar. Then they come in, and all of a sudden, Shane Bouchelle is top 20 quarterback in the country. He comes in beats North Texas in Dallas, it, it's, if you can destroy your rival at home, that's always a good sign for you. But then they go into TCU, they go to Fort Worth and beat ranked TCU at home. And I mean, forget the fourth quarter, if you just forget the entire fourth quarter, they were destroying them at halftime. They were destroying them totally. So if, if I really wanted to say SMU, I'd more say the offensive SMU more, specifically the winner, is Shane Bouchelle got out of a toxic place in Texas, comes to SMU, and now he's showing what he possibly can do in the NFL. You know, as a UNT, as a UNT student fan, it was a really, bu really a bummer that loss. But as a Shane Bouchelle fan, I'm, I'm really mm -hmm. excited for him and where they're going yeah. moving forward. But my biggest winner is actually LSU. LSU has played lights out so far this year. You know, historically, they're kind of the ugly stepchild of the SEC. But really what they're doing with Joe Burrow this year, Joe Burrow has looked just phenomenal, completing 80% of his passes. They're averaging 57.8 yards per game. That's insane. And Joe Burrow is really, they really have found their guy with him. You can't underestimate how, how important that is. And he's really high up in that Heisman race for me. I don't know about you guys. Well, and you look at LSU, I mean, it's kind of crazy that we're talking about them having an elite offense. Like in years past or the playoff era, especially, we're all, we're all like, you know, they have a great defense, but if they can get that quarterback situation figured out, this team can beat anybody. Well, now they do. Now they have a quarterback, and this is now becoming almost like an air raid offense. I never thought I'd see that day, but definitely a team to watch out for. Yeah, I completely agree with that. The way they handled Texas in that game was just unbelievable. Nobody expected them to take out UT like that, on the but road, they, especially. especially on the road. But for me, the biggest winner going to Week 5, I think, is Wisconsin. Being, they're ranked top 10 overall, eighth overall in the new AP poll. They just look like a, look like a complete team. They beat Michigan 35 to 14. Now, don't get me wrong, Michigan has looked suspect. They were up 35 to zero, but going into the fourth quarter, they just let those two garbage touchdowns in. Didn't really count. But they made, they probably ended Michigan's reign with uh, just with khaki pants over there. I mean, it looks like it's over now. 
it looks terrible right now for uh, for Harbaugh right now. But Jack Cohn overall looking like a really good quarterback. 13 to 16 against Michigan, 128 yards. Jonathan Taylor looking like a dark horse for the Heisman Trophy. I don't think he's going to be considered with how great the QBs are playing overall, but I think he should at least be considered. 23 carries, 203 yards, and four touchdowns. You can't tell me you can't put that into account of how great this Wisconsin team has been, scoring 48 points a game. And statistically, I know they haven't been playing the best college football teams, but they're statistically the best team defensively. And you you can't just throw that under the rug like that. SMU's been playing great. Auburn's been playing great. I just think Wisconsin, with how they've been playing and how much they really need that win against Michigan, that was just unbelievable to me. Now, we've talked about the winners. And Jack, I'm going to start with you. Who do you think is now the biggest loser going into week five? The biggest loser? It's funny. Both of my biggest losers played each other today. A&M and Arkansas. Man, A&M, every year they come in, they have the best recruiting class. They're one of the top ranked teams in the country. They supposedly have the best coach and one of the best coaches in the country. And every year they, they turn into a dumpster fire at some point in time. They lost to Clemson. Definitely, you know, Clemson's one of the one of the best teams in the country so nobody really faulted them for that but then they lose to Auburn they def and then you go in today and they barely beat Arkansas 31 to 27 Kellen Mond who everyone thought was going to be the savior of Texas A&M looks like he can't play football anymore he can't hit an open receiver anymore and then Arkansas Chad Morris everyone thought he'd be the savior coming in they lose to North Texas last year everyone said they said this year that they weren't going to get North Texas again and then all of a sudden they lose Sam they lose to Sam Jose State and Ole Miss uh, Arkansas if you're if you're an SEC team you can't be losing to San Jose State so that's that's who I'm going to have to say is the loser. Honestly, I'm going back to going back to what Shaji said. Michigan is just the biggest loser for me. I mean, I watched that game against Wisconsin. Forget the stats. Let's go with the smell test. They just looked bad. I mean, talk about that first half. They just looked terrible. And people who really like Jim Harbaugh fans, like people who like Jim Harbaugh, big Jim Harbaugh apologizers. They're kind of getting quieter now and because that, they just look bad. Connor? Yeah, uh, I think Jim Harbaugh, and I don't know if you guys agree, I think he's more consistent with his outfit than he is with the outfit totally on the field. I totally agree. Uh, but, you know, you look at coming into this year, Michigan was favored, in, according to FPI, uh, the fully positive individuals is what I call it. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't really think that it's a uh, uh, very good of statistic metrics at all. But coming into the season, they were favored by FBI to win all 12 regular season games. And everyone's like, can they beat Ohio State? Uh, can you beat Wisconsin? And can you beat Army is the real question. And quite frankly, right now, can you win 10, 11 games and just get yourselves in that national championship hunt? And right now, Michigan, it's not just about how, it's not just about that they've lost. It's about how they've lost. Shea Patterson is not on the same page as his receivers. And when they had the new offensive coordinator come in, we all thought things were going to change. But now it's it looks like it's even worse than what it was before. So I think Michigan is definitely the team that has not had a very successful run thus far. It's very unfortunate for Michigan. Their offensive line is just terrible. Shea Patterson just doesn't look like nothing's going on right now. Harbaugh, hey, I mean, he just sits on the sideline, just doesn't know what to do anymore. And he puts it on himself, and it's and now everybody at home is finally starting to realize that maybe it is Harbaugh's fault. But for me, my biggest loser, kind of going off what Jack said with his other loser, I'm going with Arkansas. They lose to San Jose State 31-24 in Fayetteville. SJSU's first win over a Power 5 opponent since 2006. That's not something you want on your record. Darren Roval tweeted, Arkansas paid $1.5 million to San Jose State. Makes it the highest losing payday this year, topping Eastern Michigan's win over Illinois last week. QB, QB, uh, QB Nick Starkle. Five interceptions. He should have had way more. Yeah. I mean, it looked like it should have been seven or eight, but they kept falling yeah. through the defenders' right. hands. This is not that good right now. And they still have to play four ranked teams in the SEC West this season. <laughs> well, they're not going to do anything. I, I at least think Michigan has a solution. Maybe they can get a new coach. I think the talent's there. You were saying earlier how they have just as much talent as anybody. They can put them on paper with anybody. But the fact that they're not meshing together just shows that there's something wrong with either Harbaugh or the offensive coordinator. Maybe the entire coaching staff needs to go. Something needs to happen for them. I see no hope for Arkansas whatsoever. Now, going in right now, there are a lot of undefeated teams right now in terms of ranking. And Sarah, I'm going to start with you. Out of all the undefeated teams, who do you think is going to remain undefeated and why? I'm going to go Clemson. I really, you know, Clemson and Alabama, it's, it's a toss-up, but it re I'm really going to go Clemson. For me, it's all about the coach-quarterback combination and which one of those two is stronger. It's got to be Clemson. You know, Nick Saban and Tugabailoa, obviously, like we, we, could, we could wax on about them all day, but really Clemson's just stronger for me. Hey, you look at the ACC throughout. Coming into the season, besides Clemson, mention one other team that was getting hyped. There was one other team, North Virginia. Carolina. Well, well, yeah, North Carolina because of because their new head coach from Texas several years ago. But 
but Virginia was getting hyped simply because no one else, no one else was bringing back anything. Either brand new head coaches going through transition years. This, I mean, really, it's just not a very competitive conference overall. So yeah, I gotta go Clemson. There's no one on the schedule that can even just stay with me. Yeah, I mean, I guess we're gonna make it a clean sweep. I'm gonna go with Clemson too. ACC is a dumpster fire. I'm gonna have to say Mac Brown coming back. That's a good story. He's a good coach. I like him dancing in the locker room. But other than that, ACC's dumpster fire. You know, maybe you'll have a Wake Forest come in and beat him. But I don't. I don't think it'll happen. I think Clemson will go all the way. You know, I, I'm also gonna go with Clemson. It's simply because of their easy schedule. Yeah. I mean, look at this: UNC, Florida State, Louisville, Boston College, Wolford, <laughs> NC State, Wake Forest, South Carolina. Those, those are all W's, right? I think you can just check all those off for them. Yeah. Alabama, they at least face three ranked teams in their next eight games. Texas A&M, they're going to win that, but still a ranked team. <laughs> LSU and Auburn. LSU could shock them. We don't know. Tua right. could just have an off night. But I'm not sleeping on Ohio State either. They are looking like probably the best football team overall in the entire NCAA. They are just looking fantastic right now. A lot of people have them as a sleeper team to maybe upset Clemson or Alabama because I think with all the hype Clemson is getting, maybe they'll just get too caught up in it because they don't look as dominant to me as they should have right, right now. Yeah. But that's just for me right now. But coming up next, we're going to look at the rest of college football. We already did look at the rest of college football, but we're going to break down the game that we've all been looking forward to. Stick around. We're breaking down UNT versus Houston. Listen, all it took was someone who would insist that I just try. Suddenly, everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. No one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize... You feel so hopeless. I need help. I need help. You feel so hopeless. Then one day you realize... Unless they've been through it, how can they understand? I don't need this. No one's going to judge you. Suddenly everything was turned around because they insist that I just try. All it took was someone who would just... Listen. of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%, that's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Fresh will be really a key thing as the game progresses. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick more towards the defense. You know, it's it, Clayton Toons coming in. He's the sophomore now, sophomore quarterback coming in. It's his third start. And it's gonna be on the road. Talk about De'Ara King, the wide receiver, and his wide receiver taking redshirting the year. I've never heard of that. And staying, they're staying, not transferring. They're staying. I don't. Uh, that's a that's a conversation for another day. But he, it's his third career start. You definitely have to bring some pressure on him. You don't. You're at home. The atmosphere is great here. You're coming off a big win. A lot of people are coming. A lot of Houston fans are here. I've been seeing behind us. So the defense definitely has to come in. They definitely have to come in and prove that last week wasn't a fluke against this high-powered offense. You know, I totally agree about De'Aaron King. I just thought that was bizarre. I agree. I've never seen that before. Connor, you might have to tell me some other time. Have you ever seen that before? <laughs> no. Never. But you know what? It, did, it wasn't looking like a good season. I mean, think about it. Derek King, Keith Corbin, Marcus Stevenson. Great offense, but their defense couldn't help them out. And so maybe they're just thinking, hey, next year is going to be better, so let's just wait till next year. I think the key for this game is going to is going to be to stay on their toes about Clayton Toon. You know, the funny thing is that every time a team, even if they're a bad team, every time you get a new offensive coordinator or a new starter, you got to really watch that first game because you can come out hot. Because what are we? How do you scheme for a football game? You watch film. There's not really much film on Clayton Toon and the way that they're going to scheme around him. So we're really, we just have to stick to our game plan, and our defense really just has to stay on their toes. Dana Hardison, the, uh, the head coach for Houston, he's an air raid kind of mindset guy. He loves to run the air raid on the offensive side of the ball. So let's see, let's see what he does with Clayton Toon, the sophomore quarterback. Not much experience this year. He played a little bit later, uh, late, late of last year. Uh, but let's see if he gets some easy throws to get him some confidence early in the game. But the player that I'm really watching for Houston in this matchup is going to be Marcus Stevenson, the receiver, because he's elusive in the open space. Look for him to get some early touches in this game. UNT has to be aware wherever Marquez is on the field. Yeah, my key player is going to be defensive lineman David Nenny. I mean, four four sacks on the season, four and a half for loss. He's just a talent unlike any I've seen. He just pops out. He just jumps out of your screen when you watch him. And if he gets to Mason Fine, it's going to be a lot of trouble here. Now, looking at the flip side for UNT, Mason Fine, he's the nation's active leader in career passing yards with 10,357. That's no small feat. He's, had, he's really had a historic career here at UNT. For me, for UNT, I, they can't fall behind. They're 0-2 in trailing at the half. They, we've seen that too many times, and after the first quarter, if they don't score first, we know that they're going to lose because right now when the opponents score first, uh, score first they're 0-2. There's no point. Right after the first quarter, if you see the opponent scores, like, all right, that's it. We know they're losing. I've yet to see them have that that warrior mentality where they don't give up. We saw it against Cal, yeah. but they could not complete it. I need to see that with them. You look at Seth the Trail's complete tenure with UNT, five and 16 when trailing at the half. That's not something you want in your program that you can't come back from adversity. 16 and six though, when they score first. That's what's most important to them. It's not the defense, it's not the running game, it's you gotta score. That's the most important thing. Right. I'm glad you said David Anini. I was going to butcher that if I was going to say it first. But I'm going to stick. I think that's how you say it. I, I'm, I'm, I apologize I'm, if I'm, I said I'm it I'm banking wrong. on what you're going with. But I'm going to stick with the offensive line. David Anini has, you said he had four sacks. But that was in two games. Out of the four games they played, he has four sacks in two games. In just two games. So it's definitely going to be the offensive line. As we said earlier, uh, Houston has forced a turnover in 21 straight games. So if the offensive line can give Mason Fine some sort of time, if they can protect him from, you know, their defensive lineman at Anini, I mean, of course we're going to score. He leads the na he's the active leader in the nation in passing yards. He's going to air it out. That's we just need to give him time. Two really good offenses in this game, but one thing I'm looking to see is if we can kind of keep, uh, we, if we can confuse Clayton Tune right. and give him some different looks because they're an air raid offense. Now they've been successful running the ball this year, but. I'll, like you mentioned earlier, if we can score first, that'd be huge because keeping Houston on their toes defensively and making them play from behind, especially with a sophomore quarterback, it's going to be something big in this game. And speaking of the run game, I mean, I know we've been talking about Trey Siggers all show, but I really do think, feel like we have to continue to commit to that run game. He and DeAndre Mooney, uh, Tory, excuse me, they just really have to continue to like be that one-two punch. Uh, Tory has to continue to catch those field, ca catch those passes out of the back, and Siggers just has to keep balling. Yeah. I think one thing that's a huge advantage for UNT is that I think Houston's coming in with just their psyche's just not there. I mean, yeah. Derek King red shirts are 0-2 on the road. You're going against a team that's just, they're starting to roll. Everything's starting to click now. Maybe that's the thing UNT needs because Houston just looks like, I mean, I don't know what happened to them. 1-3 overall, 0-2 on the road. Nobody expected this for them. Now, let's look at big picture stuff. Let's say UNT wins this game. Connor, 
Is this the game that will turn UNT season around? Oh, most definitely. I, I, I love that question. I love that. Coming into the season, I was looking at the Houston game. I'm like, if we can win that second home game in a row, getting the bye week, and then you're out Southern Miss, those two teams, UNT and Southern Miss, could arguably uh, compete for this division on the uh, Conference USA this year. But if they can win this game, that could give them so much confidence looking ahead. And they're like, you know what? Yeah, we lost against SMU and Cal, but we found a rhythm. And they're confident heading into maybe the biggest game uh, uh, two weeks away, heading into the bye week. So I'm really looking forward to see what they do against Houston today. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't have the more you know direct answers you did. You know, if De'Eric King was playing, then of course I'd say, yeah, this is a big game. But you have a new coach this year. They're off to the worst start since 2012. Their best wide receiver and best quarterback decide to redshirt the year. I mean, and as you said, they're just they're they have no answers right now. So I I can't specifically say we're, if we blow them out, then maybe. But if it's one of those games where it's you know 30, 27, or you know a close game like that, I I still have a lot of questions that I don't know this game will provide the answers to. For me, it's just all about confidence level. A win is a win. I think if we can get these back-to-back -back wins, we need, we really need it because we just cannot seem to win on the road this year. They need that confidence of a back-to-back -back win. You know, Sarah, I, I'm, I'm unfortunately I'm gonna have to disagree with you there. Being a win is a win. I honestly hope this is a close game because I want UNT to understand that they can get through adversity. They have yet to come back. They have yet to have that really hard fought game. They had it in Cal, but you want them to come out on top. If they just blow out Houston, I just don't think they really learned anything about themselves because I just don't think they have an identity yet. If you go against Cal and you're like, okay, I mean, this game we can keep up with, but then we go to SMU and get completely blown out of the water. So where are we in terms of standings? I think if this is a hard fought game, maybe it comes down to one last drive. Maybe Mason Fine needs the drive once again. Maybe we're going to have the drive part two. We don't know. I really hope that this one gets them together. Do you do you think you agree with me here, Connor? I agree. I, you know, I want to kind of elaborate more on what you said earlier about one team is trending up, one team is trending down. Houston's the team that's trending down. UNT is obviously uh, trending up right now. But I, I kind of agree with Sarah, though. I think winning is just the most important thing. But I think controlling their emotions, like I mentioned earlier, is just the most important thing. I know you love to see a, a blowout win. Winning, it, winning close games is also very good. But winning is just the most important thing. I don't care how they win. Just take care of business. But Stay consistent, stay efficient as the season goes along. That's the most important thing. That's really great. Well, next up, Mean Green Game Day breaks down Texas football, and we have a very special guest that's going to break it down with us. Stay with us. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. I'll be right back. Hi! You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home, just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. <laughs> Well, it's family weekend here at North Texas, and NTTV has brought back a special family member. We welcome back Josh Conrad. Good to have you back, man. It's good to be back here, man. I miss you guys. It's such an awesome place to be. 
the sun right on your forehead. I miss the weekly like skin cancer worry I had. It's awesome to be back. You missed it so much that you wore a texture shirt. Alright, I'm in grad school. You guys support the brand you're currently supporting. Still love North Texas. This school's amazing. Um, but yeah. Well, you know what? It's kind of like a KD situation. My next chapter. Let's talk about your next chapter. You really love Texas. There's no denying it, judging by there. In your opinion, how good do they look right now? They look like a 9 or 10 win football team right now. They, they look like a team with a lousy secondary, but improving secondary. They're athletic. They're freakishly athletic. They've got athletes finally. It's kind of like what we didn't see in the previous years where you, you knew like they were Texas, but it didn't look like they had that speed, that size, that physicality. They have that now again. They have a great quarterback. They have a great offense. Defensively, you know they're going to lose a couple games. I wouldn't be surprised if we lose to OU the first time. Maybe beat them in the Big 12 title game. That's kind of my hope for the season. Um, but yeah, they look like kind of a 9 or 10 win team. I could go on for days if you want me to. I mean, because like, Connor, go ahead. I'm going to let you go. Okay, ahead. well, they have a lot of youngsters. Like, a lot was, of youngsters. Yeah, and by the time you face, if you face OU, like let's say the Big 12 championship. The second time, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You guys will be more experienced, and I think you guys, you have an easier schedule towards the la latter part of your uh, schedule this year. Uh, the last four games, you should be able to win, uh, but you guys should be more experienced at the, at the end of the year. You guys will be playing on a different kind of level, if you will, and I think you guys will give Oklahoma a better game if you all were to play them yeah. the second time. Yeah. Like Oklahoma State, that scared me the entire week, because <laughs> Oklahoma State, Tylen Wallace, Chuba Hubbard, I was terrified, man, because it's Oklahoma State. They've beaten us like six straight years or something like that. Um, so just to win a game like that at home, even though Texas didn't have their best game, to bring a B game and still win something like that, that shows how far you've gone as a program. Something like North Texas, where you can come out, maybe not play your best game, but still win a game like this tonight. That's where you see development. It's not about just a one-off type of thing. It's about can you play not your best and still win football games. I think overall they're looking great. They're scoring 42 points per game compared to 31 last season, allowing 18 points per game compared to 26 last season. And even with how they were last year, they ended up winning the Sugar Bowl versus Georgia. And I'm pretty sure you were surprised at that, that they were able to take down such a big team in Georgia. Now, I thought I was going to get roasted for wearing this yeah. on this show, but no, no, you like the positivity. No, no, he's the one that's been a little critical of Texas. Now, you can tell by the smile on that's his here. face. I'm ready for it. I'm not going to lie. I really, you've grown modest in your days. Yeah. We're going there. Last year, I remember you going off on one of our colleagues <laughs> about them saying Texas will overrate. I, I'm not going to say they're overrated, but I'm definitely glad that you've come down off your lofty expectations. I do agree, though, they're a 9-10 to 10 win team. I do think anybody can win at the anybody can win at the cotton bowl it, that's just a when you got bam bam sam out there you never know bam bam happen. sam you it's a coin flip every game I, but i'm i can agree with that you they're a young team they sam ellinger is a good quarterback it, it's i was gonna i thought i was gonna come out here and have to yell at you and get into a screen match but it's 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 a good next year we're winning it all oh, okay. 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 We're going to the it's, it's, so texas is, texas is back <laughs> we're back okay. next year we're winning it all okay. lsu you better watch out in baton rouge <laughs> you better not you should have watched up you should have watched up for lsu when you did face them <laughs> I'm, an, I'm an lsu fan and i'm here to tell you i'm glad we played y'all early in the season not later in the season. i'll tell you what man the ac in that locker room was 72 degrees are you, <laughs> pulling, are you gonna pull that <laughs> argument nice you're pulling the lebron argument back in 2014 all right, here's what I'm going to say. I have sources, a.k.a. people in my grad class that are on the coaching staff for Texas. Right. They said LSU players would look over at the sideline right. and wave at UT and then go down. Okay. So I don't want to say they were faking injuries, okay. but they were faking injuries. Bringing, okay. bringing up controversy on North Texas. Bringing it on. Yeah. Well, Jack, honestly, I think the expectations can only, only be lofty if you don't think they can be met. And when you have a quarterback that has 72% completion rating, there's no, that's not really lofty expectations. That's kind of reality, bro. It's 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 always the same. Texas is back. They have been back since Vince Young. It's always it's They're always, always gonna, back, right? They're it's always, although, always although, be I mean, just a, just a plug, like greatest college football game ever played, USC Texas 2005. I was I was I would think I was six years old, seven years old oh, when that game happened. Cup. So I don't really hey, remember. LSU Alabama 2011. That's the game of the century. I'm sorry. We'll talk about it later. Now hold on. I want to move on because we've been talking about Sam Ellinger. Now everybody said he was a dark horse for MVP. I personally thought he was a dark horse, but then that loss to LSU just completely just derailed it. Kind of like a Mason Fine situation. Everybody thought Mason Fine was going to be a Heisman candidate, but then they saw him against uh, uh, SMU, and that just completely <laughs> faded away. So, and I can tell by your face you're kind of upset at that. I, What's your view on Sam Ellinger? What do you think his potential is? So I think the first half of the LSU game he was pressing a little bit. But he was great in that first half. The offense was a little conservative in the first half. He had a drop touchdown pass to Keontae Ingram. But you look at what he did the rest of the game, his numbers have been amazing this oh, season. Absolutely. If you look at the passing statistics, I don't have them on hand, but they're like top 10 in every single category. They are. He's only thrown one interception and it was a tipped ball last week. The guy's just balling out here. And I do think he hasn't used 
his running ability is his top ability. And there's been some games this year where you know Texas is going to beat Rice. You know they're going to be Louisiana Tech. He hasn't fully utilized that. You saw it in the last play against Oklahoma State where he took off for a little 20-yard run on like third and 11 or something like that. Yeah. So I just think this guy has so much to offer. What, what he brings from a leadership standpoint, and for me to bring it back to North Texas if I can, it's what Mason Fine brings to this yeah. program. Before this program, before Mason Fine, it was Andrew McNulty. You guys weren't <laughs> here when that happened. We lost like 70-7 yeah. to seven to Portland State. But it was Andrew McNulty, Alec Morris, quarterbacks like that. You have to have a guy with the intangibles, the passing ability, all that. That's what Ellinger brings Prescott to Texas. Quality, hey, if you the Dak Prescott quality, hey, Tim Tebow a little bit in terms of like. Ellinger's a much better passer than right, Tebow, yeah. but he does bring that same intangible that Tebow brings yeah. to Texas, like Tebow brought to Florida. I, I think agree. a lot of people are better passers than Tim Tebow. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not hard to do. <laughs> but keeping with Texas, I want to ask you one more question. Obviously, the biggest rivals, Oklahoma. Do you really think? You guys have any chance against Jalen Hurts? Yes, I do. Because here's the thing. You saw what he did earlier today, right? Since 2013, every single Red River rivalry game, Texas has been the more physical football team. We haven't won every game, which ultimately counts for more points. But we've been the more physical football team, and it's been a toss-up every year since 2013. So I think going into that game, you never know what's going to happen. You know Ellinger, there's no holding back, man. It's kind of like the LSU game. There's nothing holding back from Texas. Well, what do you think Jalen Hurts is going to do to that secondary? You even yeah. said what did, a, But hey. what did Joe Burrow do to that secondary? And Texas was still right there. So ultimately, it's going to be a game in the 40s. You know you're going to have to outscore him. Texas left 14 points on the board in that LSU game. If you do that against OU, you will lose. But hey, maybe they won't, and maybe we'll find a way to win a game. It's a rivalry. You never know what's going to happen. So it probably will be a good game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially after the Big 12 title game last year. Yeah. Now, real quick, let's stick with another team in Texas. We're going to move on to SMU. SMU. They beat rival TCU for the first time since 2011, the 41-38 win on the road. Their first win against TCU since 1984. SMU is 4-0 right now. Nobody thought you were touching on it earlier. Texas uh, Texas transfer, like you said. Bouchelle. <laughs> Bouchelle, he's been unbelievable. I mean, 67% completion, 1,159 1, yards passing, four, uh, seven touchdowns, only four interceptions, 152 QB rating. What's your view on him overall? I'll be honest, when it was 2017, I thought Bouchelle was better than Ellinger. Yeah. Okay. And I, I thought if Bouchelle yeah. had played in that USC game on the road, he would have won. I always kind of thought Bouchelle was a better quarterback. I mean, it worked out at Texas perfectly, and it, it's kind of working out for Shane right now. Um, just to go in and kind of transform a locker room, you know, show them this is how we win football games. This is that, you know, mentality where we're playing for each other. It's not just about, I want good stats, I want to put up points. Kind of like right. when Cortland Sutton was at uh, SMU, right. and it's just like, you know, this is great. He's going to the NFL, but as a team, we're terrible. So I think just even bringing in that outside view of, hey, maybe we should do this different, you know? Hey, maybe show up to morning lifts. Maybe run this route a little differently. It could pay off. I'm still not sold on SMU. I still feel like they could end up five and seven, and it would surprise nobody here. Um, but I mean, it's awesome for Shane. I'm happy for the guy. Um, yeah, overall positive vibes. Obviously, wish we would have beaten them for UNT, but uh, I'm feeling good about Shane. I'm pretty sure by the end of like the second quarter, we're like, yeah, this ain't happening. This ain't going nowhere. Now, Xavier Jones for the running back, he's been a stud overall. We remember what he did to UNT earlier. I mean, 127 rushing yards, three touchdowns. SMU overall, do you really think that they can really go far if they keep this going? I don't. I, I mean, for me, it comes down to roster depth. And there's a certain point where I, they're playing South Florida right now. I don't know what the score is. Um, it's Bouchelle versus Charlie Strong. But at some point, it comes down to roster depth. And when you get into conference play, guys start getting hurt, you really see what your two and threes look like. That's, I mean, Alabama right now, how many guys do they have out of that O-line position? And they're still able to win football games. So it comes down to how much depth do you have and how much is your program built. For me, I don't think SMU's at that level just quite yet. Um, so maybe a bowl game would be great for them, but I could see it falling apart as well. Well, it's going to be great, but UNT does have a bye week after this game, but we predict today's games and next week's games. And Connor is still with us, so stick around. I need problem solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Here we go. Here we go. We're gonna go out there to rain. Gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, look at the rain. Okay, quick. Oh yeah, yes. 
so much fun. I rescued Toast from a shelter in 2011. I love Toast because she's a lazy diva. Toast does whatever she wants, obviously. She's sleeping right now. She's an epic snuggler. She's so comforting. She's so loving. Toast makes me laugh. <laughs> when I walked into the shelter, I knew right then that she was special. All right, well, we're less than an hour away. Everybody's having fun here. It's good to have Connor, man. I'm, I truly really did miss you, man. But let's go into our first games. We're starting with predictions. It's UTEP at Southern Mississippi Golden, uh, Golden Eagles. Conference USA matchup at MM Roberts Stadium. I'm going to take Southern Mississippi overall. UTEP, they've allowed 36 points at 413 <laughs> yards per game. Southern Miss, they, they just completely love to throw the football, and I think UTEP's just going to struggle with that. They only have two losses, but they were against SEC teams. What are you going to do against that? Yeah. And Jordan Mitchell, he's just going to have a complete the amazing day. I'm taking Southern Mississippi. They beat Troy on the road. Hey, Sarah, so how much thought did you put into this one, too? I put very little thought. Um, I picked Southern Miss because they're playing UTEP. Right. I, and I have to agree with that. I'm going to go Southern Miss. Uh, UTEP is one of the worst teams in the country. And I'm, I'm going to go Golden Eagles here. Jack Abraham is one of the best quarterbacks in Conference USA. I took notes for this game. You All did? Right. Wow. Conrad taking notes. This is the what are you doing with your life game. If you're sitting at home on a Saturday night at 6 o'clock watching UTEP and Southern Miss, you need to improve your life dramatically. What are you doing, man? I, these teams are awful. I'm taking wrong. Southern Miss. Uh, UTEP is improving. Southern Miss had a big road. Big road win against Troy. Unless you're an alumni of one of these teams, man, flip the channel or something. Come on. Yes. Uh, last week, I said Nevada and UTEP was the game I would never watch ever under any circumstances. I'm this keeping it. it this week. Yeah. Southern Miss is a 27-point favorite, so I, I'm definitely not biting my nails. I'm going Southern Miss. Yeah. Once again, I'm picking, I'm picking Southern Miss. All right, now we're going to move on to another Conference USA matchup. The UAB Blazers are taking on the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. I'm going to take UAB. QB for Hilltoppers, he's out for the rest of the season with, an, I believe he had a foot injury, and then UAB is only allowing 95 rushing yards per game. That's one of the best in the nation. I'm just more confident in UAB than Western Kentucky. I'm taking the Blazers. You know, it's at Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky's coming off a bye. UAB lost the most production in the country from last year's 10-win team, 11-win uh, team, including the bowl game. So. I look at this UAB team, again, they lost all that production from last year, but I gotta give Bill Clark some love, their head coach, has done an incredible job, but this is a major rebuilding year. They faced some really easy opponents early on. I think that's where you're seeing some of their success come from. I'm gonna go Western Kentucky in the upset at home this week. All right, before I get my pick, I just wanna say how awesome this atmosphere is, man. I, we did this four years ago, and it was dead out here. Hour before it's that New Denton culture. We talked this about it. This is exactly what Ren Baker envisioned, man. This, we have music going on. There's beautiful people walking all over. This is amazing. This beautiful is what, what we envision. I know I'm wearing a Texas no, shirt. It's funny you say that because last week, last week we talked about it, how much Ren Baker and stuff the judges completely We've changed. Massively improved. Um, for this game, UAB is 3-0. I'm not, I'm not going to try to overcomplicate anything. I'm taking UAB here, defending CUSA champs. Uh, I think UAB gets a big road win. I'm going I'm to I'm agree with you on this one. UAB, West Kentucky, UAB is three-point favorite. It's a good defense versus a good offense. Uh, Look Western, at these silly band hats. They're, they're trying, they're they're trying gonna, to they're steal the show. They're trying to steal the show away too. from us. Those are goofy. I'm going, I'm going UAB. I'm also going UAB. I really just like their defense, and I, I think they get. I think they stay undefeated. I, all right. I, I definitely, lost I definitely, all respect for you. These hats, what are they, in high school? Sorry, all right, all right, all right, all right. Well, now we got to move on to next week's games. Like we said, UNT does have a bye, so we're going to next week's game of Oklahoma State at Texas Tech. Oklahoma State today going against ranked Kansas State. We're wondering how that's going to go. Texas Tech is going against Oklahoma. Oklahoma already killed them earlier today. 
Texas Tech lost to Arizona, I think it brought them back down to earth. I'm taking Oklahoma State. I'm going to go Oklahoma State as well. Uh, Texas Tech has some injuries at the quarterback position. Um, so moving forward, I want to see how the Red Raiders kind of respond to that. But I'm going to go Oklahoma State in this matchup. Now, Lubbock's a difficult place to play. could be interesting early on. We'll see how Spencer Sanders, a retro freshman, does at quarterback. But I'm going to go the Pokes, and I trust Mike Gundy to get the job done. I'm sure they can see on camera, but the ridiculousness They're stealing our mojo. these uniforms. Ten, ten out of ten on the stealing uniforms. The mojo. Zero out of ten on the uniforms. <laughs> I don't care what won us an Emmy. Those guys watching? are not winning an Emmy. I will say, Texas Tech, I watched them a little bit versus Oklahoma. I thought Oklahoma was playing a scrimmage, man. They, yeah. they didn't look like Tech Tech had anybody on defense. I thought Matt Wells was going to bring in this new defensive mindset. Uh, it doesn't look like that's going to happen until year two. Oklahoma State, the playmakers they have. I think it'll be a close game in Lubbock, yeah. but Oklahoma State wins one on the road. I'm still, I'm, I'm confused where they're going. The stadium's that way. They're going that way. I, I think they're lost. When did, become hey, the hey, I, when did Mean Green game to become the roast? I don't, I don't know what's going on. I'm going Oklahoma. You wear right feathers now. on your hat. We're going to roast you. I don't. I don't get what they're doing. Oklahoma State, I'm going with them. They're, they lost to Texas. They almost beat them. Texas Tech, they're oh, a dumpster. Right, they're, right. they're, eh, whatever. They're, Texas Tech's a dumpster fire. I'm going Oklahoma State. Listen, and I might live to regret this. I'm actually going to take Texas Tech. I oh picked my. this game before this OU game because I knew that they were going to lose. You, losing two games at home is really tough to do, and I really think Texas Tech, It's the line is pretty close on this game. I think Texas Tech can probably pull it out, but it's going to happen fourth quarter. All right, now we're going to move on to, I think, Conrad's favorite game. This is also a game that's going to happen next week. The Longhorns are going to be at West Virginia to take on the Mountaineers. I think Texas, like you said earlier, Connor, they're coming back to form. And earlier in the season, they were just trying to gel together. I think they're finally back. I'm taking UT. Coming off the bye week, I think UT is well, going to be. Be careful, man. Yeah. Hey, UT, they're coming off the bye week. They're going to have some guys back from injury. They're still going to have some that are injured. But that's not the biggest thing I'm looking in this game. It's playing in Morgantown. But West Virginia, I think they're kind of like the blueprint of a of a rebuilding program right now. They lost their head coach. They lost all their star players from last year. I'm going to go Texas on the road coming off the bye. I look for Texas to improve as the season goes along. And West Virginia, I don't see them really competing in this matchup. Well, you know, Tom Herman's a great coach. I bet Houston wishes they still had Tom Herman. <laughs> but, I mean, you're in Houston. So I, I think Texas going on the road at West Virginia. Man, this is just kind of an appetizer before OU week, man. We're yeah. going to feast on West Virginia. Last year they came into Austin. Will Greer thought he was cool flashing the horns down. Not this year, man. We're going to get some revenge on West Virginia. We're going to make it personal. I think Texas is big. Biggest win of the year next week. West Virginia yeah. fans, don't even show up. Burn your couches at home. We're taking over Morgantown next week. <laughs> A little update on the band. They're walking towards a parking lot now, away from the stadium. Just wanted to throw that out <laughs> They're there. They're lost. No, I don't know what's going on with I them. I think they heard us. Hopefully they find their way back uh, somewhere. A wise man once told me, his name was John Denver, to take <laughs> me home country roads oh. to the place where I belong, West Virginia. But he's wrong this week. I'm, next week, I'm going Texas. West Virginia's, West Virginia's terrible. They're rebuilding. <laughs> I'm going Texas. Jack, could not agree with you more. I'm going Texas because, honestly, hook them. I like you guys so far. Like, you're all cool. All right, I'm not all right we got one final game. You guys game. need a place to stay for ACL. I got you. All right, well, we got one final game to predict here. Tonight's game, the Cougars are here at Apogee against North Texas. The last time UNT and Houston met at, at Apogee was September 10th, 2011. If Connor, that rings a bell. That's when Apogee first opened. I'm not that old. <laughs> oh, no, he's lying. And that's when Houston completely obliterated UNT 48 to 23. The last time UNT won, was in 1975 and they won 28 to nothing. Good year. That was good a good year. year. Absolutely great year. But I think that streak ends today. UNT is winning. I am taking the mean green. I'm going to circle it as much as I can. I'm taking the mean green. I totally agree. One team is trending up. That's UNT. One team is trending down and that's Houston. Uh, the Cougars defense has not stopped anybody. I don't think they're going to be able to stop UNT, especially at UNT. Uh, I like the UNT Mean Green to, to get a win today. And let's see how that young quarterback, uh, Clayton Toon, does for Houston. Let's see how UNT tries right, to get Houston. we got to go quickly here. When I was an analyst, I used to pick against UNT all the time because it was edgy. But Cougar High doesn't stand a chance tonight. UNT by 40, winning big. Right. The band is an omen. They're walking the wrong way. They don't want to be here. I'm going UNT. Last time. Last time Houston beat us, Case Keenum was their quarterback. I'm picking UNT. All right, well, that's it for us. Thank you, Connor, for being here. It's always an honor here. Well, quickly, Jared, I think you should toss that over because the pick was so quick. Always a great tradition here. But if you want to follow us on YouTube, go to NTTV Good Sports shedding. for more content on North oh, Texas God. Television. Go to NorthTexasTelevision.com. This has been Mean Green Game Day. Ah. <laughs> this stinks.